What's up guys, today I'll be showing you my Lightroom and Photoshop workflow on one of my favorite photos from Chicago. Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So first off, I always like to go down to Lens Corrections and click Enabling Profile Corrections and Remove Chromatic Aberration. So once I do that, I like to go up and I like to adjust my white balance to how I want it. So in this photo, um, I'm going to keep it kind of on the warmer, cool side. Maybe I'll just keep it how, how I shot it. Honestly, maybe lower it a little bit. Okay, all right, about there. Um, let's see, the tint. I'll lower it a little bit, it's a little too much magenta. All right, I'm going to go for a really drastic dark, but uh, white photo in this. I really wanna bring out this fog a lot and then make these this down here more black and dark but make this yellow taxi pop so i'm going to lower the exposure to about 35 and i like to work on a flat photo and then bring the contrast up later to make the photo more poppy um, once i edit it and then throw it into photoshop to do my final touches on um, this one i'm going to boost the highlights because like i said i really want to bring out that fog so i'm gonna go ahead and boost the highlights i'm going to uh, <clears throat> raise the shadows up just a bit bring the whites up uh, looks like got too much there about 25 Go ahead and turn this off because I don't like seeing that um, then I'm gonna lower my blacks because like I said I really want to make the photo more dark so I'm gonna go ahead and lower them and I'm lowering them knowing that I'm gonna be raising the contrast later so go ahead and bring it back to where it was um, clarity, uh, clarity is it's a tough one to play with. Um, you raise it too high, you start introducing noise to the photo. Um, you desaturate the photo, but you do bring detail, but I like to bring the detail in later with the sharpening process that I do. Um, so I'll raise it a little bit to 10. Um, the dehazing, I, like I don't want to get rid of a lot of that fog. So I will bring it up a little bit just to get those blacks a little punchier. I'm going to desaturate this uh, quite a bit, maybe to about 15. Let's check with the vibrance. Slide it back and forth a little bit. I kind of like, um, let's go to about 25. Um, and what I'll do here, this is where your photo really turns into how you're envisioning it. This is the magic right here, essentially. If you really like a tone curve, just go ahead and save it as a uh, preset in your point curves. What this does is it's messing with the reds, the greens, and the blues. So I'll go ahead and keep those how they are. Go ahead and go into the RGB, and I, what I wanna do is bring up my shadows. Make it a little darker right there. Bring up my mid-tones. Cause as you can see now, I'm starting to really enhance this fog up here. Raise the highlights a little bit, and then crush them just a bit. I might bring that down a tiny bit there. I'm gonna go back up to my contrast. I'm actually gonna lower the contrast because it was, once I did that tone curve, it really put a lot of contrast in the photo. All right, we're gonna go down here. I'm gonna mess with the blues a little bit. I'm gonna take some of the blue out because as you can see, there's a lot of blue on the buildings and I don't really want that. And I don't want a whole lot in the water either. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and lower it to maybe about 60. See if there's any aquas. Yeah, I'm gonna lower the aquas all the way down. Yellows. See the only the only yellow I really want to pop in this will be the water taxi. So I'm gonna lower it a little bit, knowing that I'm gonna come in later to enhance this yellow on this. Desaturate the oranges a tiny bit. Desaturate the reds a tiny bit. Purples. All right, we're getting about to where I'm wanting it to be. And as you can see, I brought the blacks down to make them more dark. Like I said, I wanted down here to make it more moody in a sense. I don't really like that word that much, but yeah, more moody. Um, and then I brought the whites up to exaggerate the fog more. All right, so the hue, I'm not gonna do a whole lot in this because there's not a lot of there's not a lot of color in this photo. I'll bring the oranges up to about 10 and make it more yellow. Luminance, I am gonna drop the blues to make them more dark to about 50. 
Yeah, I'm gonna bring those aquas up actually to make the water, because a lot of the water is aqua. So I wanna bring the colors up in the water to give it more of an enhancement. I'm going to lower this yellow down the luminance. I don't want it so bright, because like I said, I'm going to make that pop in Photoshop. I'm going to make this up a little bit by 10. Sharpening, this is where you will want to use the masking tool a lot. So what you'll do is hold Option or Alt and slide it over until you have all the areas that you want sharpened as white. So anything black is not sharpened on. I'll bring the sharpening up to about 55. I'm just checking the edges now, sharpening the edges more. Now on the noise reduction, I shot this at ISO 200 so there isn't really any, but I will raise it up to about 10. Most of the time I will do 10 noise reduction unless I know the photo is exactly 100% sharp. I'm happy with it, but I did raise it a tiny bit. Uh, now we'll go down here to the transform. And a lot of times the auto tool will work in this sense. Let's see if it did. Yeah, it did. It did a pretty good job. I'm gonna go ahead and mess with this a little bit. Not seeing anything drastic happening to be honest here. I might lower it just to desaturate it more. I'll raise this up a little bit. It looks like it's making a little bit of a color change, which I'm which I did like. So a lot of the color changing, if you're paying attention to me when I slide these, is happening in the bottom of the photo. So I will slide it up a little bit this way. And like I said, I am desaturating it quite a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and Photoshop, edit in Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so we got the photo in Photoshop. I always like to duplicate my layer because I don't like to work on the original document. I like to make changes to a copy. Let's go ahead and do some of the basic adjustments. Make it a little brighter, about 15. I'm gonna raise the contrast up to about 10. And here's where I was telling you about the color balancing. So I'm already getting rid, go to highlights. Make it more bluish. Go to shadows. This, yeah, this photo is a little bit easier than most of my edits I've done. Now we're gonna go up here. I like to mess with the LUTs in here and kind of just mess around with them. I usually really do foggy night. That's my favorite one. If I do it on a photo, I will do foggy night. Um, I usually bring it down pretty low because obviously if your opacity is that high, it just looks like crap. So usually I'm around 10 to 20%. I will usually do a normal blend mode or soft light. Soft light will really make it uh, the blacks punchy. Uh, I'm gonna do this tone curve. I'm gonna raise the shadows a tiny bit. It's a little bit too dark for me right now. There we go. That looks a lot better. I'm gonna maybe raise the highlights. And keep that about right there. So, one final adjustment with the tones. So what we're gonna do here on this one is selective color. Go into yellows. And I'm going to start adjusting it how I want it. There we go, that looks really good right there. So let's check this. Looks like it's starting to pop a little more. So there's before, after. I'm gonna turn this layer off, I'm gonna hide it. Command I will make the, the layer black, which hides everything. Then I'm gonna grab a brush uh, with my flow to 100% and take a white paint brush. Make sure your foreground is white over here. If it's not, hit X. If your colors are different, hit D. It'll change the colors to default which is black and white and then x will change your brush to white or black so you want to paint with a white brush on your black layer to bring out that color adjustment you just made so go ahead and paint over it and as you can tell that yellow is the only thing affected now so what i want to do now is i want to take all the layers that it's made and make them into one layer with the photo so you're going to hold command option shift e That'll merge all your layers into one photo. So you're gonna go up to filter, convert for smart filters. All right, now that your layer is converted into a smart filter, you can go to filter, camera raw filter. So I'm gonna go in here. This is where I always do my vignette last. So that's way too much. Uh, maybe about 20. About 45. I'm 
Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I like that. I want to make these buildings a little more drastic with light. So I'm gonna take a radio filter. You can right click and then reset. Let's just size this properly. So I might go up to about 10 on the shadows. Drop the blacks, make the blacks a little more black. Bring the clarity up a little bit, about 20. It really makes it stand out a little more. So as you can see there, it went from a little dull to more vibrant and popping. So go ahead and make that a little more further down. I wanna put it a little further down this way. And you can turn your mask on by clicking this. And if you don't like anything where it's at, like I don't really want it down here on the road or over here because honestly, if the light's coming from this way, the light's not gonna be on this side of the building. Use the bracket keys to make your brush larger and start painting away. And in some cases, this can take quite a long time depending on what you are, what adjustments you are making. I don't really go a little bit on the road here. I don't really care about that. Perfect. So this is the adjustments I've made just in camera raw. So now I'm going to make another radio filter around my water taxi. There we go. And let's check it before and after on the filters. Can't really tell on this. So I'll raise it a tiny bit, maybe clarity five. That makes it pop just a tiny bit more. All right, this is looking pretty good. I like this so far. I might try bringing a radio filter down here. And I might actually raise that exposure a tiny bit. Let's check this mask real quick. Turn that mask off, raise the highlights up, about 15. It whites up a tiny bit there. Uh, what do I look like if I dra drop the blacks? Okay, that brings out the blacks over here a little more. Okay, now that we're back over here, it's where I'll fine tune my photo to its very last finishing touches. Bring the shadows up a little more, drop the blacks to about five, contrast about five. Let's check this temperature real quick. Okay, I'm liking that there. Raising it, make it a tiny bit warmer. It was a little too blue. Uh, let's check the saturation. So I'm liking the overall photo so far. I'm gonna lower the saturation a bit. Nothing to the vibrance, but I am gonna go back in because I did like the saturation on the water taxi. I liked how much yellow was in it. I'll go back to fit and view. All right, perfect. So I hit okay. Now that you have your adjustments. So here's what it was before I went into camera raw. And then here's after. Now I'm going to do my sharpening. So what you wanna do is, again, Command Alt Shift E. Merges all your layers you just did into one photo. Filter, other, high pass. You can always overdo this, so you wanna be really careful. And honestly, 1.5 is looking really good how it is. Um, if you start getting way too high in this, see all that haloing you're getting? That looks really bad. That's gonna look extremely way too sharp and really noisy and just complete crap in all honesty. So go ahead and keep it at 1.5 as you can tell. Have really nice refined edges. I'm usually in between 1.5 and 2.5. Depends on the photo. All right, hit okay. All right, and you're probably wondering why does it look like that? Um, Cause you're on normal blend. So you wanna take that normal blend and you wanna either use overlay or soft light. On this photo, I'm gonna use overlay. Go full screen with this. I think that's gonna be it, guys. So go ahead and file, save. Now that it's saved in Photoshop, it'll automatically update into Lightroom. And then there's your final photo. Now we will export the photo. London house. Water taxi. Foggy sky. Export to your desktop and upload it to whatever social media platform you decide. All right, I will go ahead and I will toss up the final photo now. All right, thanks guys. If you enjoyed that tutorial, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for notifications every time I upload a video. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll be sure to answer them. Peace.